And the families of the victims and survivors gave impact statements before the sentencing. Parents described the agony of waiting to hear if their child had survived. We want to warn you, some of this may be difficult to hear. CBS News Detroit's Rochelle Graham has more. On November 30th, 2021, gunshots shattered the lives of those inside and outside this building, turning Oxford High School into a crime scene. More than two years later, the people whose lives were changed forever spoke in front of and sometimes directly to the person responsible. You intended to leave my husband a widower and my children motherless. There is no forgiveness for you. Much like teacher Molly Darnell, student Kylie Osage survived being shot. She described laying on the ground, unable to feel her own legs, watching her friend die. 15 minutes of laying there absolutely helpless. 15 minutes of lying in a pool of my own blood. 15 minutes of hearing Hannah St. Juliana's last sounds while stroking her hair and trying to encourage her. Words Hannah's family had to listen to while also sharing their own. A creature who left Hannah lying in her own pool of blood, crying in pain, who went to go shoot her again, does not deserve to take another breath. His parents will never see the light of day. Oxford District employees would be fully held accountable and we would all be working on a time machine. I want you to remember when you were 14. Can you even? It's such a young age. I want you to think about everything that came after 14. Everything Hannah doesn't ever get to experience. Tate Mirror's father described the moment he and his wife found out their son was among those killed. The thing that and the thing that stands out to me was what my wife said. She put her head in her hands and it said, "Not my baby boy." Madison Baldwin's mother described the immense denial she felt before identifying her daughter's body. In my head, it wasn't going to be her. As I walked down the corridor, I entered into a room with a steel door and a small glass window. I couldn't move my feet. I couldn't get close enough to look. But when I remembered, I was there to prove somebody wrong. I looked through the glass. My scream sh should have shattered it. My daughter's lifeless body was laying on a cold metal gurney. I remember her hand laying out from underneath the sheet and her fingernails were blue. Blood smeared in her hair and they made sure I saw her from a side that was more acceptable for a grieving mother. While some spoke of forgiveness, Justin Schilling's father made it clear he wants to see the shooter suffer. He sits across the room from me at this very moment, dressed in orange, emotionless. Although I'm sure he may have a half-baked idea of just what I'd like to do to him, I'm not quite sure he has adequately envisioned the exact nature of this idea. I'd really like an opportunity to physically show him how much pain he has caused me and my family. But in a civilized society governed by complex laws such as ours, this type of display is not permitted, but you can rest assured, you piece of <laughs> that baby bird screams would pale in comparison to the screams that you would exude if I were only able to show you. Is that I truly hope your new roommates welcome you in properly and show you the kind of treatment you can only get on the inside, as it's clearly all you've ever wanted. And, in my, and it is my hope that there is some kind of pain involved. If the shooter's motive was tied to being lonely, miserable, or lost, Madison Baldwin's best friend wanted him to know that one of the lives he took could have made his better. Madison would have been your friend. I want you to know that she would have treated you with nothing but kindness had you not killed her. Rochelle Graham, CBS News, Detroit.